Hello everybody, how are you? Um, I'm coming back from my monthly vlog video. Um, so yeah, today's video is about doubt. Doubt, some people think it's a feeling. Some people think doubt is something you just automatically always feel and always have. Some people think it's a normality in life. Well, the reality is that doubt is not just a feeling. Doubt is a spirit. It's a spirit that the enemy uses against people and that he uses he allows to come upon people so that people can waver away from god waver away from the plan of god waver away from the word that god has spoken over a person's life and so that they can deter from the course that god actually intends for the person to be on so there's a scripture in james chapter 1 verse 6 through 8 and i'm going to read that from the king james version Verse 6. Actually, I want to start at verse 5. Because it says something very key. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, liberally, and upbraideth not, and it should be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. So I wanted to read verse 5 with that because verse 5 talks about wisdom. So it basically says before it tells you what a, what someone who lacks faith or who lacks um, trust in God is like, it tells you that if you lack wisdom, ask of God. And then it goes into saying that those who, who doubt God are like a wave of the sea. So basically that right there tells us that all you need is wisdom to know how to not doubt God. All you need is wisdom to know how to trust God. How do you gain that wisdom in being able to trust God? You gain that wisdom by getting to know God. In my experiences, how I learned to trust God is getting to know him. He is a provider. He says he's a provider, but I know that because he's provided for me. He is a healer. He says he's a healer, but I know that because he's healed me, whether it be emotionally, physically, or whatever. What he says he is, he is that, and he's done it in our lives. So there's one thing my pastor always says. My pastor always says, does God need to blow your mind again for you to believe him? And that's the truth. Does God need to blow your mind again for you to believe him? All this doubt creeps in because things may not happen how we want them to happen or when we want them to happen. But at the end of the day, the scripture says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if that's the case and he's come through for you yesterday or in previous times, then he will come through for you today. Doubt is the enemy trying to deter you from your purpose in God. When the enemy can get you to doubt, he can get you to try to, try to take alternative routes and alternative measures to get to another place. And those alternative routes and alternative measures only take you off the course. They're not going to lead you to where you need to be in God. They're going to prolong the whole process. They're going to take you somewhere you really wish you hadn't have gone. But if you just use wisdom... And trust who God is and trust who God says he is. That all that doubt goes out the window. It goes out the window and you'll be led on the straight path with God. See, now God wants to get us to a place where we just trust his word. We just trust what he says. If he gives us a word and he says, okay, I need you to trust me for this. Or I need you to go here and go do this. Then he wants us to be at a place with him where we believe him. We believe him. It always baffles me how some of us can believe God to save our souls. Something. Have you ever touched your soul? Have you ever seen your soul? That's not even a tangible thing. And we can believe God to save our souls. But some people can't even believe God to pay their car note. Can't even believe God to pay their rent. Can't even believe God for gas money. It baffles me how the enemy just allows doubt to creep in that easily. But now... Today, make up in your mind that you're going to believe what the word of God says, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, forevermore. And if he's provided for you yesterday and in previous times, he'll do the same. If he's healed you yesterday and in previous times, he will do the same. Amen. God bless you. And here are some scriptures um, based on doubt. You can um, go to and meditate on uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. 
It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the women saw that this tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Amen. So, that's, like I said before, the enemy's job is to get that doubt in you if he can get that doubt in you he has a good enough root to be able to use you and to just take you off the things of God and take you off of trusting God and here's a, a key thing it said the the first verse of chapter 3 says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made so we're talking about doubt here and how the devil tries to bring doubt but this gives a description of the devil and the serpent. It says he was the most subtle. So if his goal is to bring this doubt in, he's going to bring it in the most subtle way. So if God gives you a word, he's going to maybe send your mother or your brother to come to you and be like, oh, well, maybe I don't know about that. Or mm, maybe now's not the time. Mm, you sure that was God? You sure God said that? You sure? You sure he said that? And he'll send it in the most subtle way to get you to doubt God. He don't have to just say, okay, God is a liar. God don't really mean what he said. He don't have to be blatant and say that, you know. He'll just send little things to get your mind racing, to get your mind thinking, okay, maybe God isn't going to come through for me. He, he He's a liar. The devil is a liar. He will plant those seeds to speak against what the word of God has told you. Amen. So I just find it key and I find it funny that it says he was the most subtle because that is absolutely true. When it comes to doubt and when it comes to the enemy creeping in, he does it subtly. He does not just bombard people with things. And doubt is a big thing that can deter us all. Doubt can have us miss our blessing. Doubt can have us miss a pivotal season in our life. Doubt can have us miss key steps and key keys to the things that we need to um do in our lives and the things that we need God to do for in our life. So if he will bring that in subtly, that means we need to be keen in the spirit and we need to be watching. Amen. Doubt is something that you need to be watching for. You need to make sure that when stuff comes in your space, that it is not of God. And when it's speaking against the word that God has spoke to you, that you nip that in the bud right then and there. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. You have to nip that in the bud right there because the moment you do not nip it in the mud, the moment you start receiving stuff, that's when it creeps in. And now the enemy has a door. You doubt it once. Now that seed is planted and you're going to continue to doubt in that thing. Oh, I believe God is going to do this for me. Oh, I believe God is going to do this for me. God is not going to do that for you. Oh, maybe he's not going to do it for me. It's that easy. That easy for the doubt to creep in. Now I want to give you a verse um, from Jesus. It's um, Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Um, and this is going back to wisdom, what I spoke about before. Wisdom can help you a lot along the way. Well, it does help you a lot along the way. Wisdom is the very thing that helps us be able to know God. And in knowing God and having that wisdom in God and the wisdom of God, it just allows us to be able to know God and be able to stand firm in his word, even when the enemy is trying to come against us. Amen. So Luke 4, verse 3, it says, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word 
that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Oh, Jesus. See, Jesus stood on the word. He knew the word, number one, because he was the word. He was the living word. The word made flesh. But he knew the word. He set the example for us. He knew the word. So the devil tried to say, okay, well, if you be the son of God. No, Jesus was the son of God. You can't, you, you, you can try to bring doubt to him, but it's not going to work. Jesus is the son of God, but that's how the enemy works. He will say, well, if, if this is true, then why don't you just try to, or maybe you should, if he tries to come with ifs, maybes, and all these buts and if, ands, and buts, you know, to try and make you waver, to try and make you think other than what God has told you. But Jesus hit him, hit him with a key thing. Jesus said, nah. It is written. See, Jesus knew the word and he spoke the word. And that's why it's pivotal that we know the word of God. So when the enemy tries to speak against something, we're like, no, I know the word that the Lord has told me. And I know that the Lord's word never fails. And I know that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. So what God says he's going to do, he's going to do. Because my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You got to know that word. You got to stand on the word. You got to speak that word. Amen. But Jesus said, it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, even Jesus told him, it's every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus is telling you, this is how we live by the word of God. You got to know that word because that's what we live by. That's Jesus's word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See, Jesus said it. I've been saying it throughout these whole segments of the video, but look it. Jesus said it. He said, this is how we live by every Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is pivotal to know what God is saying to you. It's pivotal to know what God is saying in his word. Because then the devil can't plant those seeds in your mind. You can just easily, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, you will not plant that seed. I do not receive that in the name of Jesus. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I know what the Lord has said about me. I know what the Lord has said in this situation. It was God who told me to go up, get up this morning and go here and do this. So I'm going to do this, not wavering. I'm going to have faith because my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And I'm going to do what God tells me to do because I'm going to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. So now I'm going to give you um, another thing that Jesus said. So Jesus was basically, ex he gives us some key elements to why we have no reason or no need to doubt him. <laughs> Besides the fact that he does everything for us and he's done all these miracles and we have documentation of it. Um, but that's kind of where, that is where he's going with it. Um, so in Luke, actually, actually no, I'm in Mark 8 verse 17, and I'm going to go all the way to 21. So it starts by saying, and when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not, nor understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves of bread among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, 12. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? Amen. So Jesus was telling these people, why are you doubting? Why do you not understand? What, what? Can you explain to me why you do not believe me to be who I said I am when you have seen me? You were in the you stood in the midst of my presence when I did these miracles for you and for the people around you. You were right there. You were a part of it. I had you helping me. <laughs> and why is it that today you don't believe? Why is it that right now for this situation you feel like I cannot come through for you? You feel like I'm not God enough? For this situation, not good enough, but you feel like I'm not God enough for this situation. So he said to them, why reason ye? That means why are you thinking about this? Why do you even have to think about this? Why is this something that is even a, a I got to, oh, I got to think about this or, oh, maybe this. Can this get, why are you even thinking about this? Don't you remember? He said, and do ye not remember? Like, come on, guys. Remember when I said, the 4,000. Remember when I did that? 
there was 4,000 people and we didn't have that much food, but I felt to remember, know that I am the God of every situation. Know that I am God enough for these situations to, to get you through everything, to provide you, to provide for you in every situation. Amen. This is Jesus's word right here. He said, how is it that ye do not understand? Jesus was like, man, it, there comes a point in time where if I do all these things and when I do all these things, there comes a point in time where you have to trust me. There comes a point in time where you have to understand. You have to get this. I am only here for a short amount of time with you. You have to get this now because you're going to have to go through some things where you're going to have to really, really trust me like never before. So if you don't get this now, what are you going to do when I'm gone? Amen. God wanted his people to get it now. And I that's how it is even in our time. You have to get it. There comes a point in time where you have to understand the, this thing. You have to get it. You have to understand that trusting God is not an option if you want <laughs> to live the way God has called you to live. I mean, if you don't want to live the way God has called you to live, then it's not an option for you. I mean, you can make it, you can make it an option or whatever. But if you want to live in the fullness that God has called you to live, trusting God is not an option. It's, it's just the thing to do. It's not a, oh, maybe this, maybe. no, it's the thing to do. It's not just an option. It's the thing to do. So he, how can you not understand? How can you not perceive these things that I've done for you? And we have to get to a place where it's just like, okay, no, God did this. He has all this documentation in his word. I said, I believe him. I've accepted him. So I believe what he's done in his word. But not only that, I remember when you did this for me, Jesus. I'm not going to forget that you just did this for me last month. I'm not going to forget that you did this for my mom. I'm going to pull on the testimony that I heard from the sister in the church. Because if you did it for her, you could do it for me. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to speak that blessing that you gave over her. I'm going to speak it over my life. I'm going to pull on that. I'm going to grab hold of that for myself too. Because if you did it for her, you could do it for me. So I believe that you are an unchanged. God, you are the same God. So if you did it for them, you can do it for me, God. I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna stand on your word, and I'm gonna believe you. I'm not gonna waver. I'm not gonna be like a, a ship tossed to and fro. I'm gonna believe you, and I'm gonna stand on your word, and I'm gonna live for you, and I'm gonna be empowered. Amen. So we're gonna walk in boldness. We're gonna walk in that surety of God. We're gonna be sure in God, sure in the things of God, sure in what his word says. If his, if his word said it, that's what we're gonna believe. Amen. If his word said we can do it, which his word said we can do all things through him, Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. So if his word said it, we're gonna believe it. We're gonna stand on this word. We're gonna make a declaration. You, That's where you have to get to a point where you're just gonna make a de declaration that I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm gonna stand on the promises of God. I'm gonna stand on the principles of God. I'm gonna stand on the ordinances of God, I'm just going to stand with the Lord. And that's the place you need to be. And man, the things of God will just come to you. You will be able to walk in your God, give it purpose. When you have to go through that process with God, you're going to go through it knowing that at the end of the day, God is with you. Yes, I may be going through this process. Yes, I may be going through this trial. Yes, I may be going through this fire, but God is with me and I'm going to stand on his word because he said he will never leave me nor forsake me. So yes, I'm going through this. Yes, it may hurt. Yes, it may feel uncomfortable, but I am standing on the promises of God. Woo, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to stand on God. We're going to stand on the promises of God. We're going to believe his word wholeheartedly. And we're going to live in this thing. We're going to live in his word. We're going to stand on his word. Amen. I'm going to pray really quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for being who you are, God. God, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to, to even be able to have your word and experience your word and experience you and experience your Holy Spirit, God. God, I ask that you just just help those who may be experiencing doubt, God. God, I just... I just come against the spirit of doubt right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Your people were not created to doubt you, but your people were created to love, trust, and obey you, God. So right now, I speak that your people will obey you, love you, and trust you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, any hindrances in anyone's life that's causing them to to put more weight on someone else or something else and to put more trust in someone else or something else, Father God. Remove those things right now so that they trust you and only you and that they have no choice but to trust you and only you, God. God, that I pray that in them trusting you, you will get the glory.
out of their lives, God. And in Jesus' name, comfort your people who may feel like they can't trust you or who may feel like things are too hard, God. Comfort them in the name of Jesus, God. But at the end of the day, God, let us all, God, just trust and believe in your word and stand firm in the things of you and on your word, God, not doubting, not wavering, not being like a ship tossed to and fro in the sea, Father God, but standing firm, Father God. Like your word says, we need to stand firm with the armor of God. In Jesus' name, bless your people. It is so, it is finished. It is finished, it is finished. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise God. I love you all. And I love doing these videos. I love just experiencing God with you guys on video. I love just being able to tell people about the goodness of the Lord, tell people my experiences and share pe share to people my experiences with God because God does not take us through things. God does not train us and he does not take us through our individual processes so we can keep it to ourselves. He wants us to be able to share it because it's ministry for people. It will restore other people's broken hearts. It will give confirmation to other people. It will repair other people. It would empower other people. So, amen. I'm just going to continue to do these things and I'm going to continue to be obedient to the spirit of God for you guys and for the glory of God. And um, if you guys have prayer requests, um, you can send your prayer requests to prayer at shalanajanelle.com. Um, and also along with your prayer requests, you can Tell me if you have any questions about the Bible and questions about life and how to go through certain things in life um, with God. You can ask me those questions so you can send it along with your prayer requests. Um, so, yeah, that would be fine. Um, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Shalena dot Janelle. Follow me on Twitter, Periscope and Instagram. Those are all at Shalena Janelle. See you guys.